Okie dokie. In this problem, we are given a function f of x, and our goal is to identify which of these statements are true regarding the concavity, concave up or down, of f over certain x intervals. So anytime we see something to do with concave up or concave down, it's concavity, hopefully by now we recognize that has something to do with the second derivative. So finding some information about the second derivative will tell us whether f is concave up or down. Namely, that's the relationship we've discussed already. f double prime being positive means f is concave up. And when the second derivative f double prime is negative, f is concave down. So the first step here is to find the second derivative. Really, in order to do that, we need to find the first derivative first, then we'll find the derivative of that to get the second derivative. So let's start, starting with x to the fourth. So the derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed minus 6x cubed goes to minus 18x squared. So we took 3 times negative 6, subtracted 1 to get x squared. And then uh, 2 times 41 is minus 82x, and then plus 150x has a derivative of 150. And then taking the derivative of this, 3 times 4 is 12, we get x squared. 2 times minus 18 is minus 36. We leave the x to the first, basically, or just x. Minus 82x is minus 82, or has a derivative of minus 82. So this is our second derivative here. 12x squared minus 36x minus 82. Now, starting with statement A, what we're going to do is pick an x value on its interval and plug it in to the second derivative. So the interval, negative 5 to negative 2, let's say we pick x equals, I don't know, negative 3. Negative 3 is definitely in between negative 5 and negative 2. So we are plugging in negative 3 to the second derivative. And our goal is to uh, identify whether f double prime will be positive or negative because that will confirm whether f is concave up or down respectively. So let's open up Desmos. And so again, what we're doing is plugging in negative 3 to f double prime here, the second derivative. So let's just do that within Desmos. So plugging in negative 3, we have 12 times negative 3 squared minus 36 times negative 3, and then minus 82. So we get a very positive 134. So we don't have to write 134, we can just say it's positive, which indicates when f double prime is positive, f is concave up. And this statement does say that f is concave up over that interval. So I know we only checked it at negative 3, but you don't have to worry about it being something different, like concave down, say, at uh, negative four or negative 4.5 or some other value in this interval this should still work every time so if we can confirm that it's concave up at some point on that interval we can claim that it's concave up over that entire interval they never try to trick us with any you know curveballs like that so that's you know statement a statement a is true let's go ahead and jump to statement two or statement b they have concave down over the interval negative 1, 2, 4. So a good go-to, in this case, it changes from negative to positive. So there's nothing that says we can't pick x equals 0. We're going to pick x equals 0 and plug it into the second derivative. So really, we could do this without a calculator. Plugging in 0 to 12x squared goes to 0, and then minus 36x goes to 0. And so all we're left with is that minus 82. So we get negative for f double prime at x equals 0, which indicates f is concave down. 
at zero. And they do say f is concave down over that interval. So that is a true statement. Let's go ahead and wrap up this last one here. Uh, statement C. They say concave up from 5 to 7, not including 5 or 7. So we want to pick x equals 6. And so we're finding f double prime of 6. So plugging 6 into the second derivative. Let's go ahead and use what we had for negative 3 in Desmos and just replace the parentheses with 6. And it looks like oh, we've picked it nicely enough so we actually get the same exact value, that 134, like we did for negative 3. So going back here, we get that positive 134. So f is concave up. And they do say concave up over that interval so it looks like in this case all of these statements are true all right let's see how fast we can knock out this second example f prime the derivative of the function is 4x cubed minus 3 times 23 should be 69x squared once we subtract the exponent by 1 and then 2 times 183 should be 360, 366x. And then minus 553x goes to minus 553. We take one more derivative. Finding the second derivative, we get 12x squared minus 2 times 69 should be 138 I believe and then we leave the X and then 366 X gives us a constant 366 and minus 553 goes to 0 when we take its derivative so we have F double prime starting with a we pick an X value between negative 1 and 4 let's use 0 F double prime at 0 when we plug in 0 to F double prime here first two x terms go to zero and we're just left with that positive 366 so f double prime is very positive indicating that f should be concave up at zero but they claim it's concave down so this is false option b f is concave up five to seven so we do a similar pick we pick a similar number you know we pick x equals six for this one it's strictly between five and seven so f double prime of 6 we have 12 times 36 here, let's just jump to desmos here 12 times 6 squared minus 138 times 6 plus 366 and we get negative 30 and so we get a negative value indicating that f should be concave down and the statement claims it's concave up. So this statement is false. Statement C, concave down over the interval 8 to 12. Let's go ahead and just do x equals 9. So we're finding the second derivative sine, you know, positive or negative, when x equals 9. 12 times 9 squared minus 138 times 9 plus 366 is a positive 96. So a positive f double prime value indicates that f is concave up and they claimed that f was concave down on that interval. So that statement is also false. Therefore none of these statements are true. All right. I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions on this process, please let me know.